Good morning, everybody, and welcome to worship this 21st of February. We're so excited to start this uh, worship series, Come Alive, as we trace and teach the pathway of how faith awakens in this modern age. I want to uh, invite you to get ready for Holy Communion at home as we share the sacrament. We also will do drive through communion today from 8.30 to 9.30 a.m. I look forward to sharing the sacrament with you. Keep in mind on Wednesdays during Lent, we are recording worship that's posted at noon each Wednesday. And then at 6.30 in the evening on Wednesdays, we are having Facebook Live conversations inspired by our Lenten themes. Uh, this interview this week on the 24th, I, I hope you take time to check it out. It'll be recorded, but it'll be live at 6.30 and uh, just a really meaningful interview that I have that I'm eager to share with you with one of our mission partners. want to uh, invite you to be aware also of our online cookbook, and uh, we are still receiving recipes. It's, uh, we're missing out on those Wednesday dinners, but check out the beautiful recipes that are there. I'm particularly fond of Debbie Chupa's uh, pretzels, and uh, you just got to see what's there. Send these people a note. Tell them that you're sharing Christ in your home even as you share their recipe. Finally today, I want to um, uh, update you on our COVID-19 council meeting February 16th. You can please check out our website for all the details. But we're excited that we're opening up again to small groups, that we have a, a plan for in-person worship emerging in April. Check it out. Uh, let us know how we can uh, explain or interpret. We continue to have as our priority to be part of God's saving, healing, and serving presence, even as we're praying for a, a more of us to, to get that vaccine, especially our seniors. Currently about 4%. We know that in six weeks' time it's going to be very different, and we hopefully will find that these variants they're talking about have gone nowhere among us. So check it out, COVID-19 update at our website. Well, God bless you. Let's worship God together. Church, please join me for the Lenten time of prayer and confession. We look to you to give us our food in due season. When you open your hand, we are filled with good things. 
When you hide your face, we are dismayed. When you send forth your spirit, you renew the face of the ground. We confess our sins before God and one another. Merciful Lord, we come before you with open hearts. We do not always follow our Savior's lead. We insist on our own way, putting worldly things before you. We doubt, we discriminate, we scatter, preferring darkness to the brilliance of your truth. For all this, we ask your mercy and forgiveness that our spirits may be renewed. Amen. As a loving shepherd gathers his sheep, so our Lord protects and cares for us. As patient as a parent for a wayward child, so is God's mercy for us. Let us rejoice that we have received forgiveness and that every day our Lord seeks to renew us in the image of our Creator. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome, everybody, to worship on this 21st of February. It's an honor to share God's Word with you. As we settle in, read along with me and ponder these words from the 37th chapter of Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and He brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. But thus says the Lord, O my people, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. Something amazing is uh, supposed to happen this week. Did you notice? As I record this message, it's the day before Thursday, uh, when the space rover known as Perseverance is to land on Mars. It traveled 120 five million miles to begin a nearly two-year mission to collect samples and a hunt for signs of life and demonstrate the potential for people to survive on Mars. While this is the ninth time a mission from Earth has traveled to Mars, this exploration intends to return home sometime within ten years, concretely exploring and imagining a day when we could see life on Mars, when people like us could get out of Dodge or Muskego and set up life on the red planet 125 million miles away. Set your GPS on that one. Any takers? As we ponder life on Mars, our mission today is to explore the future of life and faith in Jesus Christ back here on Earth. Like Neil Armstrong's first Michael Jackson moonwalk, one giant leap for mankind. If there is life in Jesus Christ, the first step is a giant leap. Welcome to the first Sunday in our worship series during this season of Lent, we're so excited to explore with you, to, to look to Scripture, to teach how faith awakens in this age, in our lives. This series gets to the heart of the existence of faith in the church itself. Each week we're teaching fundamental elements of how faith awakens, beginning with arriving, belonging, behaving, and believing. Here's a diagram that summarizes the themes that we're teaching these next few weeks. There's a lot here, and we've 
place this diagram at our website with our small group discussion resources. Just click on the current worship series at our website and you can take a look at the detail. Our pathway begins today with insights on the longest and the most difficult step to arrive. Do you remember arriving? Most of us may not. We arrived in a, in a way like this when we were too little to have memories. Our mom or our dad set us on their knee and said, God loves you very much, and so do I. Our mom or dad uh, took us by the hand and, and brought us to church Sunday after Sunday even as we grew older and, and maybe protested and didn't want to go, we knew this was our way of life. And so many of us can tell stories of a, a nurturing, loving church and the experiences that we had there where we found a sense of belonging. Along the way, we began to incorporate the, the behaviors of the church. We, we came to a point where we realized just how good these commandments, these gifts of God were for us, and the rituals, the behaviors of the church in, in the sacraments and in the practices and the disciplines became part of our life. We discovered that, that the questions that we have, the doubts that are inevitable as we explore our faith, that they're natural and necessary and they're part of our faith. And along the way, it became our own. And we just wanted our life to make a difference. We wanted our life to be part of this movement and this great purpose that God gives us. Many can say right now, thank God for Christ. Thank God for the church. I'm woke. I know what an awakened faith feels like and acts like. And I'm so thankful. But that experience, that experience of an awakened faith is increasingly rare. This, uh, this experience that we're studying today gets us to the point of looking at what's happening in the world around us and in the church. Startling numbers and trends have been going the wrong way for many years. A Gallup survey reveals that in five variables, from church membership to church attendance to the felt relevance of Christian faith for someone's life, the importance of that faith in one's Christian identity, all of these have been declining in America by historically unprecedented rates, more than 10% decline in the last 20 years. Of an even greater concern is the, is the sense of what's happening in the future, because in the past 10 years, there's an exponentially growing number of nuns, N-O-N-E-S. Those young adults, somewhere between the age of 18 and in their upper 30s, those who now would say they do not identify with any organized faith or religion. What's going on? Well, we know that families have never been busier or more fragmented. Even if we make time to go to church with so many wonderful opportunities and activities demanding our attention, we may not have a real sense of belonging in church or faith. Behaving is, is important, but increasingly it's reduced to a generic sense of, of being a good person, at least with, with my people. But do we really need a church or its rituals to be a good person? Believing has become more and more uh, something where we say, well, whatever, I'm, I'm spiritual, but not religious. Couple all of this with the fact that churches today are literally turning off, especially the younger generation. A growing number of people want no part of a church so often on display as nationalistic, racist, and homophobic, unable to respect or learn from
from those different than us or other religions or cultures. Where is God in all this? It can seem pretty hopeless. But be assured, God is at work. And as always, God is being revealed through the challenges and the realities of the age in which we live. Amazing things are happening. Transformation is underway. Rest assured that God still promises to put His Spirit into these old bones. Our churches, our communities are of faith and, and you and me. Transformation is happening among people of faith and, and in the church itself that is nothing short of exciting. Many teachers like uh, a woman, the amazing Phyllis Tickle, yes, that is her name, Phyllis Tickle wrote a number of books prior to her death uh, describing our current age as being a once in every 500 year spiritual revolution. Think of that. Every 500 years, this has happened in Christian history from, from the apostolic age 2,000 years ago as Christ launched His reign on earth among His followers. That apostolic age gave away to the institutionalizing of the church and, the, and society in the transition from, from the Roman Emperor Constantine to Pope Gregory the Great who canonized much of what we hold to be the church on the eve of the Dark Ages. Then again, there was the great schism of around the year 1000 when, when Catholicism, this universal church of the followers of Jesus Christ, split for the first time into its eastern and its western branches. That was a revolutionary time, but, but certainly no greater than the era of the Protestant Reformation 500 years ago when that Catholic priest, Martin Luther, ended up giving churches like Atonement their name. We live now in an era in, in these 2000s, an era called the Great Emergence, referring to the monumental phenomena that is affecting every part of our lives, religiously, socially, culturally, intellectually, politically, and economically. The world is changing so rapidly in so many ways we can hardly keep up with it, can we? So what is God doing? How can we learn to adapt to this changing world? Well, let's get practical for just a moment. Consider how increasing numbers of people in this day and age come to an awakening faith. It doesn't happen anymore because uh, simply our parents taught it. It's not that easy for so many. No longer are people being born into it. No longer is Sunday morning this sacred time set aside only for worship. Gone are the days when, when people are ready to accept any church bullies or a threatening state that tries to coerce them into faith. So how is faith being awakened in this era of emergence in Christianity that we now live in. Faith comes alive in new ways. It comes through human relationships that are authentic, honest, accepting, inquisitive. In a video clip that I want to play right now, you'll see a small group having a discussion with a woman by the name of Diana Butler Bass. She inspired this worship series through a book that she wrote called Embracing Spiritual Awakening. And in this video clip, you'll see that Diana is responding to a question from someone in that small group. It's a question from someone who has a very real faith, but it's not a faith that he wears on his sleeve. He doesn't announce it. He doesn't broadcast it. He wonders, how, how, is, how is faith awakened when you are a quieter person like himself? And Diana responds by saying that she herself is a lot like 
that same questioner. She's a quieter Christian, definitely not a bully. And then she tells a story that I want you to hear now in this video clip, a story of engaging someone with compassion, with sincere curiosity. As we listen and take interest in their lives, we see how someone begins, how someone arrives at the beginning of a journey where an awakening of faith in Christ can take place. There's an important dimension of my spirituality, which I have learned uh, as being part of mainline sorts of religious communities, is learning to listen. And um, simply uh, making a safe space for receiving other people's stories and um, being non-judgmental um, about other people's uh, points of view. A few months ago, I was on a plane going from here to uh, Denver. And uh, on that trip, I, I sat down in my seat, and a fellow was sitting next to me, and he said, um, you know, what do you do? And I say, I'm a writer. And then he says, well, what do you write? And I say, books. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then he says, OK, uh, uh, what kind? And I say, nonfiction. <laughs> so I mean, I'm just sort of the opposite of the heart on your sleeve kind of Christian. And eventually, I got to the point where I told him I wrote about religion and spirituality. And as soon as I said that, he goes, he just sort of stiffened up. And he said, oh, no, is this going to be one of those kind of plane rides? And I said, um, I don't really think so. Um, I said, uh, what, why would you have that reaction? He goes, well, I'm an atheist. And he, then he, he, was, uh, he said, uh, I have never had any good experience at all with uh, Christians. And uh, he says, as a matter of fact, it's Christians who have made me an atheist. And I said, well, I can really relate. <laughs> and and, and I, I told him, I swore, I said, I'm not going to say a word about uh, being a Christian this whole trip. I said, why don't you tell me what uh, you do? And he was a scientist. And, and then he started talking about how religion and science were incompatible to him. And so I said, how about we make a deal? I will not say anything about my faith at all for the next four hours, but I want you to convince me to become an atheist. And, uh, and so he did. He tried to, he taught for four hours. He told me his story, he gave me his testimony. We talked about science. He, he, he shared about science and faith. We had a great conversation. And about, well, it was probably about two hours in that he finally said to me, he said, you know, he said, I've never had a conversation with a person that I knew to be a Christian who was willing to simply listen to why I was an atheist. He said, what kind of Christian are you? <laughs> <laughs> and so, see, I'm with you. I'm with you, CJ. You know, it's, it's like um, there is a really important and beautiful place in this cultural picture that we're drawing here uh, for the kind of Christianity that comes into a room and doesn't announce, I'm part of the 26% of people who are still Christian, you know. Uh, and, and so uh, instead, it, it's a kind of Christianity that is relaxed and can be friends with people and simply receive stories and build credibility towards the point of telling our story in a fresh and relational way. And so what kind of Christian are you? Don't you love that? question. I encourage you to ponder that question. Ask yourself that question as we come to a close in this message, this first of our series. What kind of a Christian are you? You know, whether we're seeking life on Mars or right here on good old planet Earth, the reality is that if faith is to awaken for increasing numbers of people today, it's going to happen when our lives are like an open door an open book, when we exude a sense of welcome, hospitality, when we uh, learn to listen, when we're curious, when we're accepting, when we're respectful and encourage one another's stories, when we have opportunity uh, to evoke in those that we encounter a sense of 
of God's compassion that exudes from us to the point where they are wondering, what is it about you? What kind of a Christian are you? God, help us emerge. God, help us arrive on the pathway to an awakening faith. Church, today we are lifting up in prayer, Fred and Pat Court's daughter-in-law, Andrea, in her ongoing fight with cancer. And also we're lifting up Melody Jabinski's daughter, um, Leah, who is sick, but we don't know exactly with what. So prayers for healing and also guidance and direction for her medical professionals as they help get to the bottom of what's making her feel so bad. The response to today's prayer of Lord in your mercy is hear our prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need. God, often we fall so far from your goodness. Thank you for seeking and saving lost people like us. Let us invite and roll out the welcome mat for all you allow us the privilege to meet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who feel unwanted, unnoticed, and in whom few of any take interest, let us be your warmth and your welcome. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For churches and congregations under stress and strain in this season, sustain your pastors and your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Church. We now worship God with our tithes and offerings. But before we get to that, I want to show you this video celebrating some of the really important work we do with our partner church down in Tepeagua, El Salvador. We have ten more roof projects, which are really more like a whole house repair project, bringing the the sum total to 40. And we're also doing the roof repair um, for our partner church's building down in Tepeagua. This is a really exciting, really important ministry that's really helping our partners down in Tapiagua, El Salvador. I've got a little video for you about all that we're doing down there. Check it out now. Obras de verdad con Iglesia Luterana, que es una bendición esta hermandad apoyando el desarrollo de la comunidad. Pues, lindos techos. Tepeagua. Now is our time to worship God with our tithes and offerings. There is a number of ways you can give your tithes and offerings today. As always, you can mail, cash, or check to our church office. You can make a recurring payment through Vanco Simply Giving. Need help with that? Feel free to reach out to someone on staff who will help get that auto withdrawal set up for you. And also, you can make a, a payment through our online payment portal. If you, you click the giving button on our website, that's easy and secure. And also, we have an easy and secure way to give via text. All you have to do is text the amount you want to give to 414-626-9700. That's 414-626-9700. Just text the amount you want to give and follow the directions that come up to your, your text message. That's easy and that's a very secure way of giving as well. Let's worship God with our tithes and offerings. Good morning, church. Now is our time for communion. I invite you to commune with us from your home. If you have not gotten some bread and some wine or grape juice out, you can pause the video now and get your table set to join us for communion. And also, we, as always, on communion Sundays, we have drive-through communion, so I invite you to come during our our drive-through communion hour and get your communion kit passed out by me and Pastor Greg. The Lord be with you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right to give thanks to the Lord our God, for in the night in which He was betrayed, our Lord took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it for all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and he blessed it. He gave it for all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, in my blood, of my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Friends, the table is set. Taste and see that the Lord is good. And when you receive the gifts of God today, know that this is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. And may the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ that you receive now strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. And as you go out this week, whatever this week may hold for you, receive the blessing. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May God look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Marked with the cross of Christ forever, we are claimed gathered and sent for the sake of the world. Thanks be to God. God.